actually starting the recording right now, so uh, you'll be able to find that recording on our website, um, on the Monkey blog website, um, which Virgil will uh, post the URL in one of his slides at the end. Um, but if you go to highmonkey.com and look for Monkey blog, you'll be able to find that, um, and that should be posted by tomorrow. So. Um, without further ado, um, I'm going to go ahead and hand this over to Virgil and uh, let him go ahead and take things away. All right. Thanks, Jared. Uh, good morning, everybody. I appreciate uh, everybody joining us uh, uh, for this webinar. And uh, as uh, Jared said, he is uh, one of our usability specialists and actually was the person who uh, Proctor administered the test and, as I said, I'm the person taking credit for the test, so I'll be kind of talking through it. So just for anybody that has not heard me speak before, just a little bit about me to kind of set my uh, uh, who I am and what I do. Uh, uh, again, my name is Virgil Carroll. I'm the principal architect and owner of High Monkey Consulting. Uh, I actually hail from the great state of Alaska. Hopefully most of you have heard of it. Um, actually, my background has nothing to do with technology. I actually have uh, an undergrad as a certified athletic trainer, so licensed in sports medicine, and I actually have a master's degree in instructional design, so in education. Um, <clears throat> but from this standpoint, and really a lot around this uh, presentation here is I'm a huge user experience aficionado. Uh, I, I choose not to use the word expert because I don't really know what that means. But uh, overall, I've, I've been doing user experience for a very long time. Uh, and there's uh, the blog where, again, Jared said that we'll have the, the slides posted up later in a uh, Twitter account as well. Uh, a little bit about my street cred, just let you know that I actually do know somewhat about what I'm talking about. Uh, first and foremost, I've been working with the SharePoint uh, uh, since 2001, so I've been around it for a number of years. And uh, I've been uh, building usable websites since 1998, so I've been doing web work for uh, a lot longer than uh, uh, I've actually been doing SharePoint. So um, a little bit about High Monkey, just so that you know who we are. Uh, we've been around since 1998. We've actually been operating as High Monkey Consulting since 2004, so we're almost to 10 years uh, using this really awesome name. Uh, we have offices in both Minnesota and Michigan. Uh, we have clients throughout the U.S. and Canada. And our core competencies th sit in three different areas, uh, web and interface design, uh, SharePoint and uh, content management system consulting, and user experience. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and get started and kind of talk through uh, the test in there. A little background on why we did this, and Jared kind of alluded to it a little bit up front, but overall, uh, one of the things that really preempted this was I, I've never really been happy with the out-of-the-box experience of SharePoint. Uh, obviously, we've always worked with users, and we've seen that there tends to be a lot of issues in the way people adopt the system and, and just some of the difficulties. Well, I was participating in a discussion on Yammer, um, uh, there's a, a SharePoint group out there that's very, very active. And I was participating when actually when the Yammer group first came into form uh, and where someone from Microsoft, not going to mention the person to protect the innocent, uh, but made uh, kind of a comment when we were talking about the new 2013 that they finally got it right this time around uh, uh, usability. They put a lot more time and effort. So uh, in, instead of necessarily questioning that or getting into some big discussion, uh, we decided at that point that we actually wanted to test this theory and provide some results. So the rest of this presentation is me going through basically a high-level overview of everything we did, how we got to uh, our conclusions, and what some of those conclusions were. So uh, a little bit about the test. Uh, what we did is we performed what's called a heuristic usability test. What does heuristic mean? It really means that we're measuring against a series of heuristics uh, such as uh, how easy something is to use, uh, how easy it is to learn, and a lot of different things like that. But really the whole concept of this is it's not my judgment actually me sitting down and criticizing or even complimenting any, either of the interfaces, but actually what it is is it's us actually sitting a user down in front of a computer and having them try to complete tasks. And we look at how successfully these complete these tasks. One important thing to understand about uh, uh, a good usability test and something that's a little bit different than the way things happen in the real world uh, is that part of the usability test is that we make sure that they actually complete a task. So there's a lot of tasks where people had a really hard time with, but overall we make them actually go to that threshold where they do it. So over the next upcoming weeks and months, we're going to be posting some videos of some of our actual tests 
because uh, we actually video the results as people are going through it. And uh, so some of the times you might see people going through things very extensively and say, well, nobody would actually do that. And that's kind of the point. But for a usability standpoint, we actually want them to go through the entire task and actually complete it successfully no matter really how long it takes. So when we went through the test, we actually asked each participant uh, 15 tasks. Uh, five tasks were representative site administrative type tasks. So these are kind of things that are more site administrative uh, type activities. Uh, three questions were more around what I would consider a power user task. So somebody who has uh, uh, been using SharePoint and actually has familiarity or does something that's above the standard norm of what an end user does. And then seven questions around that. Um, so just a little breakdown of those just so that you can kind of understand how the task kind of broke out. Well, from the end user task, uh, they were uh, uh, very simple, things like uh, uh, creating a SharePoint task in a task list, finding a document, opening, editing, and saving it, updating a task progress, emailing a link to a document uh, to someone else, finding details around an event that was on the site, following a document, and creating a calendar event. So very basic end user tasks that we would always expect that end users would be able to do. Uh, when I looked at the ones that kind of fit more in that power user, it's kind of something that somebody who is uh, a little, maybe a little bit more comfortable with SharePoint has been using it a little bit longer. Some of the things that you might see there is one, creating a new list column. So actually adding a, a column to a list. Uh, changing the site theme, so being able to change it, whether it's for their personal needs or for uh, uh, the overall site, and actually creating a view on a list. Um, and then the third category that we talked about were site administrative tasks in that. So this was creating a document library, uh, actually changing the site icon, uh, changing the navigation, uh, changing security settings, and also modifying the welcome message. So those were the tasks that we had them go through. And when we do post this up to my blog, uh, uh, we will actually have the actual questions because you'll find we don't just say something like create a document library. We actually ask things more in a scenario-based uh, setting and so you can kind of get a feel for how the questions were there. So a little bit about the testers so that you kind of understand about them. Uh, we used five testers for both 2010 and 2013. So we actually used 10 testers overall. Uh, there were different people for each. So somebody who tested 2010 did not do 2013 and vice versa. Uh, one of the most important parts about this was the testers did not have any history of using SharePoint. And you might be, well, hey, that's crazy because we all know if you don't have any understanding about SharePoint, it's going to be really hard to use. Yes, but you also have to look at what we were looking at here in that the true key to usability is that people can do things without any instruction. Therefore, to really get the most uh, uh, um, uh, low level of user and to really be able to test uh, just how much people can actually uh, succeed with this, we wanted to use people that had had no exposure, no experience, had never actually seen SharePoint. So when they sat down for this test, it was actually the very first time that they'd ever sat in front of SharePoint. Um, <clears throat> testers were asked to complete each task, again kind of reiterating no matter how long it took to take, uh, so there are tasks that took a really long amount of time that people did. And then we also had testers come from different backgrounds and experience. We have a lot of different measurements. Again, we'll be posting up some of the raw results so you can kind of see some of the other different things we measure. But one of the, the two areas that tend to really significantly impact um, uh, a person's uh, user ability uh, with technology, one is their age. Uh, obviously, as we go down and we hit more of that mid-level between uh, upper 20s to, to, uh, to uh, mid-40s tend to be the most comfortable with technology. You would obviously think, well, it's actually more of the young kids, but actually uh, without going off on a complete talent, they're completely sloppy uh, users of technology. Um, and so we looked at that and we tried to have a balance in that area. And then also about how often people actually use computers. So we had some people that were on it all the time, some people that weren't on it very much. And again, that can also uh, very much uh, uh, affect the way a person is going to have uh, their experience and their comfort with technology in general. Take SharePoint out of the equation, just, just technology in general. So what did we do around the evaluation? Uh, and somebody just asked a question, says, isn't the sample size kind of small? 
in that? Well, that's actually a very good question in there, and so I'm going to give you a very easy answer. No, it's not, and here's the reason why. Because actually, what we're um, uh, looking at is where people succeeded and uh, where they failed. And what we found is actually above five, you could have done up to ten people in there, you're going to start seeing a lot of repetitive. So one thing you see when you actually start looking at the results is that you actually see um, uh, that a lot of people failed on the same uh, experiences and have the same type of issues. So you could do a lar much larger sample of users, but overall, all you start getting to is the patterns really being repeated. So uh, in, in heuristic testing overall, we found that five users, and, and there's some good established research out there, is about a good number to be able to actually get a good impression of, of how people do uh, in there. So. And Virgil, just so, just so everybody knows, I did just post a link to a, a good article that talks about um, you know, why you would only use uh, five users during a usability test and um, some of the research behind that. So feel free to check that out. Yep. Uh, and uh, so somebody, Mike Zapp, just uh, pointed out that there were actually 11 users in that. So actually, I, I should have mentioned this before. We actually did test 11 users, but one person uh, we actually pulled out of the test. And so actually, the, it's still represented in our numbers. But we actually pulled out of our results because it was somebody who uh, was so skewed in their lack of ability just to use technology uh, that they weren't even com comfortable using a computer. So it extremely skewed the results. So we made that choice of uh, actually pulling them out there in that. And uh, to answer uh, Rhonda about uh, the 2013 and, and creating that develop, uh, we're not actually going to uh, probably go over that too much today. Uh, but actually, I do have some other sessions that are going to be coming up that are going to focus more on how you'd actually do that from a 2010-2013 perspective to, to do that. So. Um, uh, And so uh, uh, somebody else just asked it, and guys, I do have to get through my slide. Before seeing the results, I question their relevance to true usability. Usually there's much mess about the first time someone is exposed to a product than how about the ongoing long-term use. It is interesting info, but it is what it is. And Ryan, I'm going to agree with you, but I'm also going to very much disagree with you in that. So you're thinking of a pattern of somebody who's in SharePoint all the time, but the reality is depending on the size of your organization, most users are very infrequent users. But you're absolutely right. There's a very different user experience from somebody being exposed from something to the first time versus somebody that actually is uh, uh, going across a pattern, uh, across it over a long period of time. But the whole point about that is at first time, people don't have any benefit of any education, anything like that. So you're actually getting a very raw experience and really understanding uh, how people look at things. So, all right, so I'm going to kind of continue on here. And uh, so when we look at the evaluation, we looked at some of the things that we do, and I'm just going to pull off some of the basic things that we looked at here just for the purpose of this presentation. I do plan on digging in more to this later down the road, but this could have been a 10-hour presentation, which I don't think anybody wanted. So I kind of looked at what I could really provide in, in the hour time. Uh, so some of the objective evaluation that we did, one is success by task. Otherwise, how did a tester complete a given task successfully? And, and that kind of stuff. And we'll kind of look at that. The other thing is average time on task. How long did it take a tester to complete a task? And we'll kind of talk a little bit more about that. And then we also have some subjective evaluation. Uh, first, we, we look at what's called uh, a SUS scale or a system usability scale. And we look at the satisfaction that people have had with an experience. What did they think of the interface and that kind of stuff. And we'll, to understand those questions that are actually asked, we'll actually have a link for that on the blog post later as well. Um, <clears throat> and then we have our usability issues and challenge fit. And the reason I put this as a subjective, because one of the things is it's kind of our interpretation from our experience of what we saw in what we did. And since we're not actually objectively measuring anything at that point, we kind of call that a subjective thing. So let's kind of look at this by the numbers and kind of talk through this a little bit. Uh, first, when we look at the success by task, we actually look at it from uh, uh, kind of this uh, uh, standpoint. And we see that there's actually some uh, variation between here. And so when you look at this, you actually look at the different levels that they did. So the things that read are, are actually people that failed to complete a task. Um, and uh, 
uh, then you know you look at the yellow and that's actually where people had several issues from it. Uh, you, you look at the light green that's completed with minor difficulty. Uh, the um, uh, dark green is in completed with ease. And so as you kind of look at that, one of the interesting things that I find here, and we'll actually look at this a little bit more later, is that uh, both SharePoint 2010 and SharePoint 2013 completing the same task with the different interfaces had different types of success. Overall, uh, the most interesting part is where you look at like question six on the list, you can see in SharePoint 2013, uh, somebody had a lot of success with that, where in uh, question uh, six on the SharePoint 2010, they really had a lot of struggle around that. So there's a lot of interesting things where you see some parallels in there and also some contrast uh, that actually brought kind of one of the more revealing uh, results that we saw throughout the process. So overall, uh, we had a moderate level of success with a lot of the tasks, and there were only certain tasks that had a really high failure rate. So that's actually good for both 2010 and 2013, that people were able to figure it out. Um, but uh, where it kind of gets more revealing is when we look at the next slide, which this is talking about our average time on task. So the average time on task is actually talking about in seconds. So one of the things that you can see here is that there were some huge amount of time that the average person, so this isn't talking about just one individual, this is talking about the cumulative average of everybody, uh, the five testers of 2010 and the five testers of 2013. And so from this side, you actually look at that, and again, you, you look at like question six on SharePoint 2010, it averaged that the typical user took 406 seconds to be able to complete, complete that task. In that. So now you're talking about uh, almost up to uh, eight minutes worth of time for somebody to actually figure out how to complete that task. And you look the same on 2013. And so uh, I'll pull up some, uh, a little bit later, I'll kind of look at some of the results and kind of what that means from this standpoint. But overall, you can kind of look and you can see that overall, uh, statistically speaking, uh, SharePoint 2013 had more success in that people were able to complete a lot of the tasks uh, uh, in a shorter route of time. One of the most revealing things that you should really look at is that when you're looking at a public website, so let's take uh, SharePoint out of the equation, and you look at somebody searching through um, you know, a website or some type of informational system, overall the typical average patience for an individual is about 45 seconds. So that's usually about the threshold that people will actually hit. And if you actually look at both of them, uh, SharePoint 2013 actually has one uh, task that actually fit within that parameter uh, uh, below it, and uh, SharePoint 2010 uh, uh, had none in that. But the other thing that's very revealing from here is if you look at more of a SharePoint-based task, otherwise actually completing some kind of task versus looking for a piece of information, but actually doing something functional where you also have the delays of the system and everything else like that, one of the revealing pieces about that is, you know, there is no real good statistics around that because that can be so unbelievably variable depending on the type of task you're doing. But overall, probably a good rule of thumb is to think that a functional type task uh, uh, should probably, most people have the patience of anywhere between uh, 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 90 to maybe even up to 120 uh, seconds. And overall, still you had a lot of tasks that fell with outside that threshold. So this is really important that where people were able to be successful, there's still some significant amount of time it takes people to uh, get through tasks. So looking at it by opinion and actually talking about the system usability scale, again, this is one of those things that we looked at and, and what it really brought about was it really looked at um, you know, people's satisfaction with the experience, how much did they like the interface, that kind of stuff. Again, we'll kind of do that. Uh, and, and one of the things is overall the rule of thumb is the minimal acceptable score for an, for an interface to be what they consider satisfying uh, using the SUS scale is 68. And so you can obviously see a discrepancy here between SharePoint 2010 and 2013. 2010 actually got the score of 58.5, and 2013 got 76.86.
So actually, one thing you can tell is that Microsoft made a lot of effort into trying to make the uh, interface feel overall more satisfying to use, which again, we should never discount this, even though that doesn't necessarily always equivalent into good usability. Uh, satisfaction is a very important part. And one thing you should never forget, and I actually think I have this in one of my slides later, is that SharePoint is a product sold by Microsoft. Therefore, one of their important things as a software manufacturer, and I'll never hold them at fault about this in any way, shape, or form, is that they sell software. Therefore, they want to make software that people like to look at, and, and that plays a significant role. But the other thing is, actually from a usability perspective, if something is satisfying or enjoyable to use, it actually does increase that usability. So you'll see from SharePoint 2013, there actually is more satisfaction from those users. So uh, when we look at the analysis and actually look at a lot of the usability issues we found, I'm going to gloss over this slide because I'm actually going to go into each of these in depth and talk about them. But overall, one of the most unique things we found out about that is there really wasn't a lot of discrepancy on the number of major usability issues. There were all little teeny issues that people had where they didn't understand this or didn't do that and, and that kind of stuff. But overall, when we looked at things that really caused a lot of issues, you know, when you look at that they were actually completing 15 tasks, with SharePoint 2010, there were only three major issues found uh, that people had a challenge with. In SharePoint 2013, it was four major issues found, and that included um, editing text on a page, changing the icon, changing navigation, uh, adding a column to a list, sharing a document, following a document, creating a view. But the part that I found most interesting was that Overall, in 2010, all the issues were very much site administrative type tasks, otherwise something that a site administrator uh, would do, which overall, from that standpoint, is something that we obviously would not, uh, or at least I hope you would never have somebody be an administrator of their site without having some type of context and training and actually having used SharePoint. So we realized in that sense that we kind of expected people to struggle more, especially with site administrative tasks because they overall are much more complex, they take more skills, and they do take a certain amount of understanding for SharePoint. But at the same time, we brought those tasks in. Because we wanted to see if you were getting this out of scratch and you were really looking at base usability, how well would people do? Well, in 2010, people had many more issues around site administrative type tasks. The ironic part was what you saw on the other side, which was in 2013, People were very, very successful around uh, a site administrative tasks, and I'll kind of talk a little bit later about why that might be. But when it came to things that more of a typical user or maybe a power user um, uh, uh, was doing it, they tended to struggle more. And there's actually some very good reasons for this, and we'll kind of talk through that in there. Um, uh, uh, in there, so um, uh, is. Uh, very interesting, and we'll kind of talk about what that means and, and some of the opportunities that we have around that uh, at that part, but one of the things is we kind of saw that, that end users had um, uh, a little bit more of a struggle uh, with 2013 than 2010. So let's talk a little bit more about the specifics of this and some of the things around it. Well, you know, first and foremost, we talk about editing a text on a page. So this tends to be something that maybe a site administrator or, you know, content contributor or somebody that typically is going to do this is actually went through some kind of training. So we do have to look at this and say we were dealing with users that had never done this before, never had any type of skills in there. Um, uh, but one thing I can absolutely tell you is that this was highly successful in the 2013 arena and uh, not not quite as uh, successful in the 2010. And probably one of the major reasons is, is because Microsoft did put a lot of effort into their interface to make it easier for editors and kind of administrators to do their work. So not only do you have the very easy edit buttons and uh, the save buttons that are now up on uh, the right hand of the interface, but you also have uh, much more definition. If you look at the screen side by side, and yes, I, I know they're kind of small, but overall, you can see much more definition around uh, the containers that you can edit inside of um, 
in 2013 than you actually can uh, in 2010 when that's actually been uh, edited. And so they put some more uh, effort around that and actually made it much more definable and used more simple language around this. So instead of having the, um, uh, the uh, just icon of a uh, document that you could then click and go to edit, overall they actually used terms in there, which was something that Microsoft hadn't done a lot before, where it was edit, save, uh, and all those kind of things. So that made some uh, significant uh, things. Now obviously, again, we wouldn't necessarily have people do this too often without some type of knowledge, but if you were doing some type of blog or you were releasing to that to people, you know, you still had to have some experience around this kind of stuff. And uh, overall, uh, 2013 definitely performed better in this manner. Uh, when we looked at changing the site icon, well, this was kind of a no-duh to me. I mean, this was like something that Microsoft has been missing forever and ever and ever that made just a huge impact in 2013, and that is that you can actually now select an image or upload an image. So you can select it from SharePoint. There's the two links inside there, one that is from your computer where you can actually upload it and have it show uh, from your computer. The other one is from SharePoint where you can go into an assets library or anything like that and do the same. Uh, this is something that's been missing from this and frankly a lot of other areas of SharePoint for a really long time and people have really, really struggled with it. And that is the whole thing that in 2010 you had to know the location of the, the icon, you had to uh, copy and paste that URL from the browser, and then you had to copy and paste that URL into here, and then you had that test link where you could test it. So there was no context whatsoever that people could use, no quicker ways for people to do this. This was a very manual process, and for a lot of users, just not surprisingly, this is something that people really, really struggled with. Why? Because it was very, very difficult to do. And as a matter of fact, this was one of the things that people failed at the most in 2010. Um, I'm, I, I'd have to look at our list, but I'm pretty sure this was question six, but you saw just that huge amount of failure uh, that you went into. And the reason being is because uh, nobody really thinks of the pattern where I got to upload a document, you know, upload a image over here, then I have to go find it, then I have to copy the URL, and then I got to go copy the URL here. It's just a huge, massive process that's very difficult, but also at the same time, it's something that most people aren't comfortable with. So them adding these quick links where we could upload or we could grab and that kind of stuff and also show uh, the, the, the sample of the image there below it, it just made a huge difference in 2013 around this user experience. So then we look at changing navigation. Well, I think uh, anybody that's ever heard me speak before knows that probably one of the things I've railed on considering my not only my side of usability but also my information architecture side that I have to make, but I've really railed on the fact uh, that uh, navigation has always been such a difficult thing in uh, SharePoint. And one of the things that I have really railed on is this whole concept of everything being termed list or libraries. And albeit I understand behind the scenes why we do that because a list is information and a library is a document with maybe supporting information around it. Overall, when the navigation is always defaulted to here's your list, here's your libraries, here's your sites, here's your discussion groups and that, the reality is most people do not think in those terms at all. And so actually uh, one of the videos we will post at some point from one of the users, I have to actually laugh because he would swear this person was a plant of mine just because I've really railed on it. As I've said, nobody thinks in terms of list and libraries. This person says, ah, uh, you know, I don't know why you have this here because like I think of something as a list or a library, I would never think of things in that way. And so that's a very important part. But also one of the easiest things we can fix is that we have that ability to modify our navigation. But one of the reasons SharePoint 2013 is so successful in this area is because of your ability to be able to inline edit links. In that, and where there are some caveats around there that I'm not going to get too far into today, um, uh, overall you just have a much easier experience. So when you actually go uh, to a site, if you're an administrator with administrative uh, rights, you're going to see that edit links uh, button right down there where you're kind of seeing the, the, the save and cancel button right now. And you're going to uh, not have to go back to that monstrosity that's been behind the scenes forever where you have to go in and be able to manage it through this really complex uh, interface that you see in 2010. Now, 
In 2013, you still have that ability to go into that interface and do that kind of stuff. But overall, you've gotten this experience of being able to do it right here. And that, and that was just a lot more successful for users. So this is another thing that I feel like Microsoft has really gotten right. And if you've heard me name my information architectures in 2013, there's a lot of excitement around that, not only about being able to do this, but also be able to dynamically drive uh, navigation more based off of some of your structure and your metadata uh, and that kind of stuff. Um, so when we look at some of the things where uh, SharePoint 2010 was more successful than 2013, uh, this first one was really interesting and something that we had uh, some good discussions about and why this was. And so why was adding a column uh, to a list so much easier in 2010? Well, there's probably a couple of reasons. One, I'm not real fond of the, the ribbon in 2013, uh, just for the fact that, that Microsoft is, in, in my personal opinion, this is going to be more of a personal thing than, than necessarily professional, is that they went too much white around there, and white really makes it harder for people to differentiate between different things. And so if you kind of look at these two interfaces, and you see where the create column is, and you look at where it is on the other side, well, the fact of the matter is that link's a little bit harder to see because uh, there's so much white space around it, and the same with the next thing. It's not as different as it used to be with all the colors that they had uh, into the previous one. They've kind of muted things down a little bit. But one of the other significant things that actually Jared was talking about, and I completely agree with him on this, is that uh, in 2013, uh, the interface has introduced a lot of ways that you can do some of these kind of routine things like, um, uh, you know, share a document, follow it, do all these things from the item itself or the items or the library itself inside the user interface. And so uh, right in here, and hopefully everybody's seeing there, uh, you can do a lot of controls. Well, as we kind of went through the, the questions, people were tending to uh, spend a lot of time in this area here trying to do it from the item. Well, one of the things you can't do is add a column, but one of the things is this kind of created, again, having people that had done this for the very, was doing this for the very first time, is it made people kind of ignore the ribbon in that. So having those function, so much functionality inside the list itself actually kind of caused uh, somewhat of a negative thing too in that people kind of ignored the ribbon and didn't necessarily look at it as a frame of reference in 2013 of something that I could use uh, to try and uh, do some type of activity. So what we found here is where we did have some failures, not only that, we also saw that this task took a lot longer for people to complete in 2013. So when the uh, when, when the gentleman that kind of mentioned earlier about somebody being for, first time versus ongoing uh, uh, production, this is actually one of the things that you can see with software that gets used a lot, is that people get very used to kind of the patterns that they work in, and any activity that really falls outside that pattern, uh, they tend to have a lot of discomfort with because if it's not something you're doing regularly, it's something that you have to remember how to do. So that really goes to another aspect of usability, which is memorability. And so um, uh, uh, one of the big things there is that there's just so much to the SharePoint interface. Uh, there's so many different things you can do. It's really hard to remember things. I've been using SharePoint forever, and I still, a lot of times, when something comes up that I don't do a lot, I have to sit there and think about, okay, where is this function? So a very interesting thing, which was something that I think in, in the overall interface was a positive step, but this is kind of the negative side of it, that people have, have started to maybe lessen as much as they would look at the ribbon, which from an end user perspective, you really think about it, that's probably awesome, but also you have the negative side that when they need to go that, they don't necessarily realize that that's where they need to go. Um, so another thing uh, that was very fascinating to this was this whole concept of sharing and, and following a document. And actually this slide and the next slide are very much the same thing because it was basically the same issue. So uh, what was the big thing there? Well, honestly, it's, it's the dot, dot, dot in there. So this was what caused the huge issue with this, is that most people just did not know what that dot, dot, dot meant. There was no contextual. This is something that is becoming more part of modern user interfaces, and people, uh, there's a lot of people that just aren't that comfortable with being able to look at that. So actually when you talk about that people couldn't find this or the follow button, it was not as much that these 
concepts were obscure to them, it was that this whole dot, dot, dot was very obscure to them. And so they didn't feel comfortable finding it versus where in the 2010 you were looking at email a link, and then on the follow document side, you were looking at the alert me versus this side. So it actually was one simple piece that uh, Microsoft kind of added in here to kind of have a more modern experience that has kind of caused that negative impact uh, from that side that uh, you know people uh, weren't really sure how to do it. Now the one benefit again you have from this kind of uh, first time versus long term experience that people have uh, in SharePoint is that uh, once somebody does find this, they're going to tend to be successful afterwards in that. And so it was kind of ironic because we did have people actually try and share a document uh, earlier in the test questions and then follow a document later so that we weren't having these tasks done side by side. And it was interesting to see that people, even though they eventually got to be able to share the document, actually struggled again when it came to follow. So there's something to be said about kind of that struggle matrix in there and, and you know, just people not necessarily clicking that panel or, or clicking in their head that panel and, and that it's a really big thing. Um, and so the last one uh, was about the creating of views. Now, actually, this is something that I personally think uh, I didn't like in 2010 either, but people were overall more successful with this uh, in that. And this really comes to the fact that uh, even though this is still kind of hidden here and it is in the ribbon as well, uh, the arrows that point to that actually has some other context to it in that. And so people were able to be able to get there quicker to actually figure out how to do that. Where in 2013, again, you've got this whole dot, dot, dot thing, which you can really see just how many of these 2013 issues were really created by that experience right there and people not being comfortable. The other thing that I'll say that is something that I think what it causes a little bit is, is this is just the, the whole new interface is so wide open. Again, it's, it's so wide open and there's so much color matching and there's so many things going on that I think it's very hard a lot of times for people to kind of process uh, what the different elements are uh, in the, on the interface itself. So let's kind of look at what we learned from this. Uh, well, first, the SharePoint 2013 interface was overall a much more satisfying experience for users uh, versus 2010. And even though it had a few more uh, usability issues, uh, overall you do actually have to look at this and say, well, it is more satisfying. And uh, that's actually an important part because if people enjoy using the software, overall usability tends to experience. And the good news is, you know, especially on the end user side, is that there are a lot of things that can be overcome there. And it's not necessarily an end all be it all, you're, you're stuck uh, type of thing. Uh, SharePoint 2013 provided substantial improvements in the usability of typical site administrative tasks. And I'll tell you another significant thing, and actually I don't have a, a picture of this, but anybody who's actually installed 2013 and looks at the default team uh, site interface, so that's actually what we use with just the team site, uh, knows that it has those uh, those panel boxes, those those uh, um, uh, uh, tile boxes up there. And uh, the funny thing was when we put together the questions, we didn't look at the interfaces, we put the questions together based off our experience and just our knowledge of what typically people do. And a good majority of those tasks were in those tile boxes in the center of the screen. So when it came to changing the theme or changing the site icon, really all a person had to do was look at that once on the home page in there. So you could see that Microsoft was putting some pretty serious effort into making the overall administration administrative experience more intuitive and easier for people to get going. Uh, the intention would always be that once you got done with that, you'd probably remove those tile boxes or replace them with other tiles or whatever. But up front, you have a really good, uh, simple, single-click interface to be able to get some of the standard things that you might do on a site interface. Um, uh, SharePoint's 2013's new modern look and feel provides a more difficult user experience overall. And again, we only looked at these tasks and, and there were some that they were very successful, but overall a lot of these issues seem to have a lot more to do with kind of the modern look and feel and just kind of this new kind of WordPress type look uh, that, we're, that we're trying to get to here that is causing some issues for end users because they're not necessarily comfortable with that, they don't understand all 
all the uh, 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 indications from the icons of what they mean, like the dot, 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 uh, and that kind of stuff. And so that's that's very important. And uh, overall, I, you know, I say where SharePoint 2013 had a much better average time on task. Uh, overall, they're still way out of acceptable norms in that. And I look more at the end user task versus necessarily the site administrative task there, in that they both take a, a long time to do it. Uh, and, and so, what if you were to look at following this up with more of a long-term study, which typically, you know, in a, in a good study, you'll you'll do something up front, and then you'll make some adjustments, and you'll do another study, and you'll, you'll do that all using different users. But if you were looking at more people over over time and their patterns, you would obviously expect as people became more comfortable with the interface uh, to do it. But you know, one of the things that you really want to look at here is um, uh, you know also that whole experience from an end user of how how many times we hear, well, SharePoint sucks or something like that. Well, some of that indication is because their exposure the very first time was difficult because SharePoint is a very complex tool. And that does create some difficulty for us in the field in trying to actually figure out how to make this stuff work. So some other usability considerations to look at. Um, uh, one of the big things, and we see this all the time, not only in SharePoint, but also in a lot of the public websites we do and other systems that we do, software and all that, is that one of the pitfalls of a lot of modern interfaces is its tendency to sacrifice user experience for cool new concepts and features. It's really a challenging world out there because everybody wants to keep having these new, modern-looking, cool interfaces, yet at the same time, some of those basic words, some of those basic functions that we had back with Windows XP that people were very comfortable with, uh, people really struggle with this new stuff because they're constantly having to learn. And, and you know, where we can't really blame Microsoft for this because they're like every other software company out there. Their job is to, uh, you know, sell software, which means they have to be staying cutting edge and on new trends and everything. It creates a challenge from an end user per experience because you're constantly having to learn new things. And that's a very difficult thing. And so we have to look at that, sometimes say, well, cool is cool, but sometimes we have to look at that from an end user uh, expectation and say, maybe it's not going to be as helpful uh, from that side as well. Uh, the other thing I think that's very interesting that we have to look at is we also have to look at how kind of our world has changed over the last, especially four, four to five years, in that, you know, especially with, uh, you know, the, the recession and everything that happened in 2008, not only in the U.S., but in Canada and across the globe, we really have to look at some of that effect that a lot of people uh, uh, lost their retirement and are having to stay in the workforce a lot longer than they did. I mean, and, and really just because life expectancy is going longer than what it used to, um, uh, people are staying overall in the workforce, but then you add, compound this and you're getting a lot older employees that are doing it and well their experience with technology is still much less they don't tend to be quite the adopters that we have uh, in kind of our younger generation and we can't do it so as these things are being put in place uh, to kind of be attractive to a new generation people that grew up with technology in their hand at all times we can't ignore that we still have a high percentage of our population that is not necessarily comfortable with that nor has the want nor desire to continually learn new things. And so, you know, is there a solution to that? No. But overall, you've just got to realize that and you've got to look at it and you've got to really look at your end user community and really what that means. Um, and then uh, I'll tell you one thing with the 2013, all hope's not lost. Yes, it had some definite struggles around the end user side, but overall the one thing I absolutely love about 2013 is they actually made it very easy to change. So some of my future posts that I'm going to do on my blog is going to talk about tackling some of these issues and some of the ways that we would do that. And so uh, kind of stay tuned to those. I'm hoping to do one every few weeks around that in there. So, But one thing 2013 gives, it gives us a very easy way to be able to make very significant modifications to the interface to more match what we need to provide for our users. So when you look at some keys to success, uh, uh, you know, you can look at that from uh, how do we really ensure success? Well, first and foremost, no matter whether it's SharePoint or anything else, we really have to look at um, uh, understanding our users and adapt. 
So where you might be an organization that has a very technically sophisticated people, you may find that the out-of-the-box experience is very good. And, you know, I understand the struggle that most organizations, the whole difficulty is trying to make too many changes, but sometimes some very simple things can be done to make a very significant impact on, on user experience. So sometimes what you have to do is you actually have to try and learn from them and be able to adapt. Follow a solid methodology for looking at this. Don't just look at it or sit down with a bunch of business owners and try and discuss what's working and what's not, but actually go through some, not only, uh, you know, some subjective discussions and figuring things out, but look at some of the analytics that you can look at, and that's where really usability testing and some of the other activities you can do around that become very effective, because now you're kind of taking the people that are involved in the project out of the equation and really seeing how end users really do things. Um, uh, you need to change your user interface to match your user pattern. And there are user patterns, so it's not just about one size fits all. If you do this with your interface, you're going to fix it for everybody. It really depends on if you're using SharePoint as more of an informational portal, uh, like an intranet, or you're using it as a public site, or you're using it uh, for people to um, uh, you know, collaborate around or participate in some type of business process. All those have very different patterns and may have different needs, and you just need to realize that. And you can't sit there and spend your entire life changing things, but Understanding that's going to help you kind of understand where you want to spend your time. And the reality is, and we've always known this about SharePoint, one thing we have to be able to do is provide some solid training. Obviously, we would love every piece of technology to be easy enough to use that anybody can uh, access it. But when you get to some of the more complex activities, like really interacting more in a collaborative uh, type manner, site administrative tasks, all those kind of things, working more complex business processes. Obviously, we have no expectation that people are just going to get that. But where I argue is that when we have things like informational portals and more information consumption systems, we should really spend more time looking at that. So the only marketing slide you're going to get from us here is just to say, well, we actually do do some of this stuff. If anybody's interested in talking about it, you're more than welcome to uh, uh, get a hold of us. But we do everything from an assessment where we look at things all the way up to doing the full, complete, uh, not only a diagnostic, but going through a lot of activities to really help you look at uh, where your system is. So some next steps that are going to be happening here. Um, uh, uh, we're going to be looking at doing some posts, uh, some blog posts about some of the different issues and potential solutions. So those will be coming. I'm uh, going to post out some of the video results because, again, you can listen to me talk and you can still sit there in the back of your mind and argue with me. But I'll tell you what, as many times as I've been doing usability studies, there's a lot of people that have argued with me as the perceived expert. But I'll tell you one thing nobody's ever been able to argue with is when they actually see a user sitting in front of a computer doing something and failing. There's never been doubt. Uh, we're actually going to be creating a white papers around the analysis of both systems and some of the recommendations there, and that will be coming up in the following months. And uh, my, my big thing is I'm going to continue to preach the, the gospel of users first, which I have done. Um, if you have some real interest in kind of learning, more about usability and some of the things that really cause issues in there. I actually did a, a series of blog posts uh, a while back called my 101 SharePoint usability tips. It actually was 101 usability tips recorded in 101 days. Uh, it's basically around SharePoint 2010, but many of that is applicable to 2013 and 2007 in that, but it's covering all different areas and really shows it. You can find that on our blog, monkeyblog.highmonkey.com, and also on our mobile site, uh, which is lowmonkey.com, which is completely just dedicated to those 101 uh, tips, but you need to access that from a mobile browser in there. So, uh, and somebody just asked a question, when will the slides be posted? Uh, I'm hoping to post them later today. We have a couple other things that we want to collect. So it will either be later today or it will be uh, sometime tomorrow. But we will send all the attendees a follow-up email just to let you know. We're going to have uh, the, the, the video posted, the slides posted, some of the supporting documentation that we use for the test posted so that you can do that. And then we're going to be putting together some highlight videos and that kind of stuff of the actual test. And we'll be posting them over time and, and we'll keep people informed. So, well, I thank everybody for attending this session. I hope uh, uh, you got some good information out of there. Um, uh, I'm open to questions here for the next little bit. So if people have some questions they want to ask, 
Obviously, you know, uh, this doesn't cover everything and anything, and there's still some other findings that we have that we want to put out. But when we looked at an hour framework, we wanted to just give you really a high-level thing in that. And so uh, don't despair. There's hope across SharePoint, but it's just some things that we have to look at and be responsible about. But I thought it was very interesting to kind of find out where the 2010 to 2013 uh, question did. And as you can see, there were some things that were a lot more successful and some things that weren't as much in that, and so very typical in, in a system just as large and com as complex as SharePoint is. So thank you very much. We'll stay on the line here for a little bit longer for any questions people might have.